have a story to share, and today's guest, like me, had a traumatic brain injury. She has since wrote a book about it, along with much advocating, including creating a course based on trauma at Sacramento State. She's got a personal experience to share, as well as a professional journey, which she's done a lot. So allow me to now bring on Joyce. Great to see you. Hey, thanks for having me on. And I really appreciate sharing my story. One of the things that we clearly have in common is the struggles that we have had secondary to a brain injury. And it's very um, tough when you go through that because physically you can look great and people don't realize what you're struggling with internally, trying to keep it all together. And the other, and you know, it's a very scary time because you're not sure, is this gonna come back? Or what's gonna happen? So in, for my story of how this all occurred was several years ago, I was at a swim meet and I'm very physically active. I do triathloning, marathoning, and all that. <clears throat> my husband and my children, we were at a huge swim meet they had, and I have no memory of any of this. I kind of remember going out to dinner with some friends on a Friday night, but this happened on a Sunday and they had a fun adult swim, you know, relay race. So I grabbed my husband, a couple of friends said, come on, let's swim this and we're going to win this. And I'm going to swim the last lap because I'm the fastest, which I did swim the final lap of the relay. And I was told that I actually finished and the timer said, do you need help out? And I said, no. And I finished at the side of the pool that was 13 feet deep. So I sunk to the bottom of the pool. My husband, they realized I wasn't coming back up. My husband dove in, got me to the top. And luckily, since there was a lot of children, there were a lot of parents and there were a couple of ER docs and a cardiac nurse specialist, whatever. And I received... Um, 22 minutes of CPR at poolside because my heart had stopped and I wasn't breathing. And then I was life flighted to a hospital and my heart stopped again on the way there and they got it going. And that's when I was on a respirator and then went through that whole process afterwards. So that's, you know, kind of brought forth the biggest struggle I had. Yes, I was fatigued and there were some issues with regard to what happened to my cardiac system and what happened with all that. But the biggest problem that I was saddled with was the brain damage. And it's so, um, I just really want to have people focus on that if there's an issue and getting help because um, there's a few things when people go through a traumatic brain injury. Number one, you're not even sure what's going, like, am I supposed to be, is this going to go away? Am I supposed to be like this? So you're not sure. And the other thing too is, is that it can evolve in different ways. So I could articulate, I could speak, but I had horrible, what they call aphasia, where I could see things in my head and want to say it, but I couldn't. So for example, my husband one time said, do you want something? And I wanted an orange. And I could like visualize an orange in my head, but I couldn't, I would say, oh, yes, I want one of those things and there's vitamin C in it and it's juicy and you peel it and do it. So I had a lot of that and it's so frustrating to me. And I, and I really talk to people a lot about this because I am a nurse practitioner. Okay, I had friends and family, I had colleagues around and nobody ever said to me, now this is several years ago, but nobody ever said, hey, I think you're going to suffer some traumatic brain injury as a result of your extended CPR. So I felt lost, very angry and very scared. I can resonate with all of those in the beginning of my traumatic brain injury. Now, were you saying you got your TBI from getting CPR, your head hitting the back of the ground? No, 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 no. It was from the extended CPR because they get as much oxygen as they can, right? To your brain. That's the purpose of the CPR. Really, what's the most important organ? Like, well, obviously your heart and lungs, but your brain. And so it was a limited, you know, there was a lack of complete oxygen to my brain. So there was an anoxia to my brain, which caused the, the problems that were associated with that. And, you know, in all honesty, physically, like I said, I actually came back pretty quickly, but my uh, neurological status was uh, the toughest and probably 
for me, in many ways, the most depressing part to tackle when I was getting better, because I had always really felt I was, you know, very active, but I love my brain. I love being, you know, I'm a scientist. I loved all that. And when that was jeopardized and I could feel that it was jeopardized, that was a, that was a low, tough point. Well, thank you for sharing your story and for all the work you do for mental health. Our audience now has had the opportunity to learn a little bit about you on the mental health side of things. What is something else you want the world to know about Joyce? What do you enjoy doing outside the medical health, the mental health field, maybe? Oh, well, what I enjoy, I do, I like, I, I love talking about all this and getting people to be aware of how amazingly strong and wonderful they are and realizing that when something happens to you, you can choose, you can take control of the situation and get better. The other thing that I want people to know is that <clears throat> as you go through things in life, the thing to me that brings about the most productive part is to be of service to one another. So Vincent, thank you for the service you do in bringing this awareness to each other and is very purposeful and good. Well, thank you very much for the kind words. It's been great to catch up with you here. For everybody watching on, Joyce also has appeared on some other platforms. She has a book. She's been on writing with authors and she's also been on a mental health break. Her episodes are spaced out, so I'm not sure which one you'll catch first. But before we sign off, why don't we talk about that book a little bit? Okay, so thank you. So yeah, the um, book is, is a result of me coming back from and studying the process of moving through a very tragic event into not only uh, surviving, adapting, but also growing from the experience. So the book is called Anatomy of a Survivor, Building Resilience, Grit, and Growth After Trauma. And you can find that by just actually putting in anatomy of a survivor, Dr. JMF even, and you can find it. It just came out. Um, but that brings people through the process of healing and over time, ultimately finding meaning and growing in the aftermath of a trauma. Well, you're doing a lot of great work for trauma patients. Something I wish I had more of was just more conversations with people who went through it, not just mm -hmm. what may happen, hearing it person to person. You're doing a lot of work on that front. So thank you so much for that. And before we get going, why don't we tell everybody how to find you, also how to find your book, again, everything you do. Perfect. So uh, you can follow me on Instagram that has a lot of information about what I'm doing at dr.jmf, that's for Joyce Michael Flynn. And my website is drjmf. Dot com that has all sorts of information there. And then again, my book, Anatomy of a Survivor, Building Resilience, Grit, and Growth After Trauma. And you can basically Google that. It's through uh, Post Hill Press as uh, the division of Simon & Schuster. You can find it there. Thank you for sharing all that. And for everybody viewing on and listening on, thank you so much for supporting another episode. We'll see you next episode on Vin Story Share. Thank you, all Joyce. Right. All right, thanks.